stand, brethren, and turn to number 66. We'll sing this lovely hymn that Brother Ashley comes. He is here, brethren. Hallelujah, he is here. Yes, Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Understanding that only the Holy Ghost can give. Oh, yes, yeah, thank you. We commit this service into your hands and we pray thy will be done. Yes, thank in God. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. God bless each one that's come along. And here we go into another little study uh, this morning under the umbrella of the Mystery Invisible Union, number 118, 118 messages of. Welcome in this study. Thank you. And today being the 9th of January, we take on another text uh, which we had last week. The token is the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. And this is part two of a series of seven little studies that, that we want to look into. So uh, be sure you follow right through because I've been astounded by what I've come across. And as we go into part two, I pray that the Lord will help us and then next week we'll go into part three. Yes. Let's see what we can pull out. Let's see what we can understand. Yes. You know, this week I received an email of one man trying to convince another man that he's confused. But the very one that was trying to convince the other one was confused, was confused himself. So we come up with a situation where it's confusion, confused, right? Does that make sense? And that is the state the church is in right now. They are confused, greatly confused. Pastor Sir in New Zealand wrote to me many years ago and he said, Oh, Brother Ashley, Brother Ashley. Why don't you go to some good church and find yourself a pastor? 
and sit down and listen to him. Brother Frank, he was Frank from Germany, he wrote to me and he said, Brother, 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 where do you get this doctrine that you are preaching? Where do you get it from? He too, I think, would like to see me find myself a good pastor. But you know what? I found it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I found a real good pastor. Okay. Not only was he a pastor, but he was a prophet. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. And in his ministry, he was to reveal the mysteries contained in the seven seals. Yes. He had the ability and the ministry, listen now, to turn the hearts of the children back to the Father. Yes, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He had, thus saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. And he was thoroughly, thoroughly vindicated by God. Amen. Surrounded through the supernatural. He had the capstone prophetic ministry and he is my pastor. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Now, I don't claim to be a pastor. I, I fall apart when I try to, to shake people's hands and, and this thing of house visits and going eating cake and drinking tea with, with this brother and that sister. I don't fit into that pattern. I'm just a humble little believer, maybe outspoken. But I'm just like you, and I have to do what you have to do, and that is listen to our pastor. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Who was the oldest pastor in the New Testament? John. John the Divine. Right? He was the last of the apostles. He was on the Isle of Patmos from 1895 to 1896 and he had the great privilege of, of having all those divine revelations given unto him. He wrote the book of Revelation as delivered unto him by the angel. And when his experience on Patmos was over, he returned to Ephesus he went back to his homeland and he pastored the church, I think, for another 10, 15 years. But let's take note what he said. Good advice this pastor gave. He said, Blessed is he that readeth and heareth the words of this prophecy. Mm -hmm. Thus we have before us the spoken words of the prophet in printed form. And I have an added to them that are exactly as he said. And I would encourage you to take this message and read it. <coughs> For it is true bride doctrine. Let's stand as we read Psalm 25, 4 to 5. This is my prayer this day and I trust it will be your prayer as we read it. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy path. Lead me in thy truth. Teach me, for thou art God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, God. You may be seated, and may God add to this scripture reading you blessed. Let's start. Churches. Look what he said. Churches. 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 These churches that surround us. Churches try to take the place of the anointed office. To preach the word of God and become bum puzzle. Remember last week he took that word? And bum puzzle in the American Heritage Dictionary of the English language says bum puzzle, bum puzzle, bum puzzling, bum puzzles is to confuse. It's confusion, absolute confusion. And number one says the Holy Spirit, amen, is not an author of confusion. So where does all the confusion come from in this day? 
Number two, God. God's not a author of confusion. Number three, look. That's what denomination does. Get it? See, God is not the author of denomination because denomination is Babylon and He is not the author of confusion. Now my pastor says this concerning the churches. There's not one of them that can receive the revealed word of God. Not one. Number four. We sang that little song this morning, I know it was the blood. Mm-hmm. I know it was the blood. Amen. And number four tells us the Spirit now is the token unto you. What is it? The life that was in the blood. Yeah. Yeah. Ah! The life that was in the blood. That is the token in this hour. Alright, number five. Now look, watch. He's got a token today, 1964, after the opening of the seals. He's got a token today. Amen. My brother, my sister, you had better receive it. Amen. Yes. You better have it. Just remember, it's a warning. It's a warning. How much does it cost? Nothing, it's free. Freely have received. Freely give. Mm-hmm. The token you must accept. You've got to embrace it. And you've got to apply it. Yes. My pastor said, you have to have it. Amen. Amen. Number six. When the seventh angel begins to sound his mystery, he winds up all the loose ends that these fellows program. And the mysteries come down from God as the Word of God and reveals the entire revelation of God. Then the Godhead and everything else is settled. The coming, the rapture, Everything else is said. All the mystery, serpent, sin, and whatever more, is to be revealed. Brother, you cannot eliminate the second coming of Christ. Amen. That's right. You cannot exclude it from the ministry of the seventh angel. You cannot expel the second coming and the rapture from all the mystery. Number seven, and he took the book, glory, opened the book, amen, and tore off the seals. Watch, watch, watch. And sent it down to earth to his seventh angel, my pastor, amen, to reveal it, hallelujah, to his people. Amen. Amen. Now we put in this together, quote, quote, quote. And he said he's got a token today. Amen. My brother and sister, you better receive it. Number eight. The evidence of the Spirit was for those who could receive the Word. Neither love, nor speaking in tongues, but it's receiving, receiving the word. Brother and sister, you must receive it, the token. And this token that we're talking about has been made available after the opening of the seals. The token follows, amen, the opening of the seals. Number nine, this angel is supposed to wind up all the mysteries. All the mysteries of God, the serpent seed, the grace straightened out. 
We were going home in the car. And my wife said to me, you know, even Brother Brandon made a statement. He said, the Lord straightened me out. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Concerning, concerning the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the evidence thereof. Everything was straightened out. Hallelujah. And uh, my pastor, the seventh angel. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The serpent seed, the grace straightened out. Not this grace, but real true grace. No such thing as eternal burning hell. You burn for million years, but anything that was eternal had never a beginning or an end. And hell was created. All these mysteries, the mystery of the baptism of the Holy Ghost without sensation, but the person of Christ performing in you the same works that he did. See, see, that's the ministry of the seventh angel, the mysteries of God. And he's going to directly upset the theologians. Yeah. yeah. He's going to clash with every church on the face of the earth. He's going to blast those denominations. And he's going to set the bride in order. Amen. Number 10. That's what God Christ is doing to the church. He, he's letting her know the secrets. Just the secrets, the mystery truths. He'll quicken them to his elect. Amen. He'll take the book that was closed and he'll open it and give all to the seventh angel to give unto his people. Amen. He's got a token. My brother and sister, you better receive it. Look at number 11. You go in by keeping every word. That's the evidence of the Holy Ghost. When when you do this, when you believe the word of God, Amen. Hallelujah. not by works, not by dressing like some clan, not by doing this and that and all the works of the flesh. You go in by believing the word. Amen. Amen. And we firmly believe this morning the same Jesus that ascended up on high in a cloud came in like manner in 1963 yes. in the days of the voice of the seventh angel. Amen. Amen. Ooh, the spirit rests on that. Yes. Mm. So what are you talking about? I'm talking about Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Amen. How can you deny the mighty angel of the covenant Christ didn't descend in the days of the voice of the seventh angel? How can you do that and claim you've got the Holy Ghost? Number 13 or number 12 the token is the word identified in you. Amen. Living itself out. Number 13, but no matter how much you speak in tongues and deny this word, you're wrong anyhow. See? See, there's no manifestation in the flesh that can prove you've got the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes. The evidence of the Holy Ghost is believing the word. Amen. Number 14. How can the Holy Spirit that wrote the word be in you denying the word? Revelation 10, 1-7. Number 15. You might meet a spirit that would tell you you are saved and give you a glorious feeling. You would shout and scream. Then when it comes to denying the word, how can the Holy Spirit that wrote the word deny 
his own work. Can't be done. Now look, this is the important what I'm going into now. So let's, let's try and get hold of this. I believe it's very, very important. Brother Graham said, this you must get. See? So let's, let's break it down a bit. Last week we spoke about Martin Luther. Let's read a bit. Number 16. The angel of the church of Sardis was Martin Luther, the first reformer. Remember when Brother Brown preached in the church ages? He was in prayer and he was pulling out these messages. And he said, I chose this one and I chose that one because I was inspired of the Holy Spirit to do so. Amen? And he took Martin Luther as the angel of the church to Cyrus. We know who he was. He, he was a great reformer. He shook Rome. He shook the Roman Catholic Church to its very foundation. He was God's chosen man. Amen. What Luther? But look at number 17. Why did Luther come out with catechism? A whole lot of things. He come out with a baptism. He come out giving a triune, trinitarian baptism which never was taught in the Bible. Never taught in the Bible. Number 18. Trinitarianism is of the devil. I say that, thus saith the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Yet, Martin Luther preached the doctrine of Trinity. Right? Yes. Is that right? Yes. Not only that. Not only that. If you go to the first seal, Martin Luther made a proclamation that all Jews should be run off. Right? Kill the liar! Martin Luther. Right? Take their bodies and burn them down to the ground. Martin Luther. He was God's chosen man. He could have brought the wrath and curse of God upon his soul, right? For it states in Genesis 12, 3, And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God's people, Jews. Yet Martin Luther says, kill a lot of them. Burn them down to the ground. Get rid of them. They antichrist. See, he was all over the place. And John Wesley wasn't far behind. John Wesley come out with false baptisms and everything else. And then come the Pentecostals all mixed up. Saying that speaking in tongues is the evidence of the Holy Ghost. If you don't speak in tongues, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. Thus saith the Lord, it's of that devil. Hmm. All right, number 19. Look, now we're in 1961 now, just before the opening of the seals. Let's read together number 19. As far as three gods, that's from hell. There's one God that's exactly right. Now, watch, 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 watch. Now, do you say then, do you believe that all these people, that's Trinitarians, are of hell? No, 
closer. I believe they are Christians. What? Now watch this. But! <laughs> but! Oh, here it comes. Watch, 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 watch. But! The hour is approaching, brother, where they are sincerely wrong. That's right. The hour is coming. The hour is imminent when something is going to happen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Now watch the next verse. And if Eagle Abbey has to listen to this tape, I would like him to really look at this. He's been interceding for us up till this time. Yes. Right? Yes. Sirs, is this the time? Right? Yes. For the man to step forth and take the book. For intercession to cease? Intercession ceases at the opening of the seals. Amen. Amen. In 1964, Brother Branham cried out, he was speaking about 1 Corinthians 13, when that which is perfect is come. In 1964, after the opening of the seals, he said this, We do have today, by God's help, Amen. the perfect interpretation of the Word with divine vindication. Amen. Then that which is in part, Amen, is done away. Yes. Oblivious! Oblivious! is done away with. Unawareness is gone. Unfamiliarity with the scriptures disappears. Ignorance evaporates at the opening of the seeds. He's been interceding for us up until this time. No, brother, it's still going on. Oh, brother Branham didn't say that. He said, up until this time. An intercessor with his own blood to make intercession upon it comes Martin Luther, John Wesley, Pentecostals, Christians, believers and everything else. The ignorance of the people. Amen? Yes. yes right. Not for your salvation, for your ignorance of the Word. He's been making intercession up until this time. Number 21. The Holy Ghost is the token. And if you do not have the Holy Ghost, you simply can't get the revelation. Amen. Because the Holy Ghost is the only revealer of the divine revelation of God. The token never come into existence until the evening time. Went west for the blast, returned back to the east with, watch, 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 the Holy Spirit interpreting this unwritten word. You see, ignorance is eliminated at the opening of the seals. Up until that time, the churches were in delusion. They were under Roman hierarchy control. They were mingling with doctrines of devils. Yes. False doctrine was 
rampant. Amen. And he was in deceiving for his church up until this time when the seven seals are broke by the Lamb. Now 23. Oh, look, 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 look. You must forsake your own ideas. You must cope with His Word. Amen. Right? Yes. And never will the Holy Ghost ever deny any word it ever spoke. When we finish this series on the, the token, when we get past these seven messages, I struck another one on the communion. Oh, brother, I thought I knew a lot about communion. It's still unfolding. Amen. Amen. Watch, watch when we get to that. Don't miss that one. You've got to cope with His Word. You might find it difficult. You might find it Disturb it. But you have to cope with it. My pastor said, Son, the revival is over. You've got to cope with it. Amen? Yes. Redemption is over. Get away from your own ideas and cope with the word. Amen. Intercession is over. You've got to cope with it. Yes. Amen. His days of meditorial is over. You've got to cope with it. Yes. The day of mercy is over. You've got to get away from your own ideas and cope with the word. Yes. Amen. And I return back, hallelujah, with the Holy Spirit interpreting the unwritten word. Amen. Don't add your own ideas. Don't add your own understanding. Cope with the Word. Yes. There we have that picture that was in Life magazine, which he said was the same angel of the covenant that appeared to Moses and to Paul. He said it's our law up there to see Jesus himself, himself there in the skies. Only Christ it could be. Brother, sister, you have to cope with what he said. You must acknowledge the utterances of the seventh angel. For his message had been divinely vindicated by God. Hallelujah. Number 24. The evidence of the Spirit, look, 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 was those who could receive the Word. Neither love nor speaking in tongues, but it's receiving the Word. Coping with the Word. Amen? Yes, amen. He only recognizes the token. That's the message of the hour. The promise of His coming. You have to cope with that. You have to cope with Revelations 10, 1 to 7. You've got to put it together. You've got to get it all straightened out via the voice of the seventh angel. Number 25, look. God gave Abraham the promise and he believed the promise. And it was reckoned to him for righteousness. But he gave him a sign of circumcision, a seal of the promise, hallelujah. And God gave him a seal of confirmation. He had received his faith when he gave him the seal of circumcision. Therefore, the circumcision now is the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes. And Watch, watch, watch. When you believe correctly, God 
gives it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't believe correctly, brother. Yes. You can't believe correctly, sister, slopping around with these message churches. No. They're waiting for their flesh to change. And that'll be the rapture. When the prophet of God said, the rapture is a revelation. Yes. Amen. 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 That's strong. But that's the token. Amen. Amen. Luke 26. Thus saith the Lord. The seven mysteries that's been hidden in the Bible all these years. These denominations and everything. God is going to open those seven mysteries to us in the seven seals. Number 27, the church age has ceased. The seals have been opened. He was interceding up until this time. Then ignorance is evaporated as the Holy Ghost reveals the secret mystery truths that are hid in the seals. The time of ignorance ceased when the Lamb took the book and broke the seals. Number 28, this day the scripture has been fulfilled. Watch, seven seals, H-A-S, has been opened. Amen. Amen. Intercession for ignorance is over. The Holy Spirit now interprets the word to be elect. Number 29, here is the seven seals. Here is the seven seals. Not the six seals, not the five seals. Here is the seven seals. Or the opening of these mysteries. And you try and get it before those denominations. Contrary to what they brother, they close up like a clam. But they've always done it. But it's the season. It's the season. The bride is raptured out of ignorance. Taken away from ignoramuses. Amen. Yeah. And the word is revealed to her. Look, number 30. This is what he said. This is what my pastor said. It'll never be done. The church can't receive Christ. Why, Brother Ashley? Because they're under the control of ignoramuses. Amen? Yeah. Wallowing in confusion. They want to believe he's come and he's still coming. Number 31, look. Put the word before them. They don't know what to do. What is it? They're confused. See? They can't cope. How can you hold the office of God's anointed and deny his word, which is himself in word form? How can you deny the word is right and then still say that you're anointed with the Spirit? When the Bible says you will return to the dust of the earth, how can you deny that and say, no, I'm going another route in the rapture? Number 32, who is Jesus? The Word. Amen? Amen? And he said, you need the Word to take the rapture yes. with it. Amen? Amen? You need the token. You need the revelation to get from A to B. Amen? To get from earth to glory. Sure. You need the token. Yeah. If you haven't got the token, you will not travel.
Note now, number 33, when Jesus come the first time, it was altogether different. from what their churches were saying. And it'll be altogether different from what they're saying today when he comes again. Totally different. The word declares... And you put the word before them and they can't cope. Them kind that take the word is God's true bride. Amen. Amen. All right. All ignorance evaporates. All ignorance is done away with at the opening of the seals. Number 34. But now, look, he promised us a full square meal. The full, look. The full seven course menu, hallelujah, for all. The seven seals are open and everything is ready for the word of God to those, hallelujah, who can receive. Receive ye the token. God has a token today, amen. Amen. God has a token today. Receive it. Number 35. Look, listen, brother, sister. Don't. Don't let Satan deceive you. Sister, brother, don't let him do it. Please don't. Receive God's token. Lay aside your ideas. Amen. And cope with his word. Look at number 36. See? All the, the truth that is embedded in this quote. He only recognizes the token. Amen? Yes. That's the message of the hour. That's the message of this day. That's the message. Amen? Of this time. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive it. Believe it. Amen. It is the token. It is your pass to glory. Amen. Amen. And when you believe correctly. God gives it to you. God bless you. Part 3 next week. Go home and study on this. He had been interceding up until this time. But now the token has been distributed. Amen. The mystery truths have been made known. That is the token that will take you from earth to glory. He said when you're on your deathbed, you better have that token. Yes, brother. You better have it, sister. You better have it, brother. And our brother Steve was telling me this week he he almost left this earth. See? He come that close, a matter of days. The doctor said if you'd waited any longer, you wouldn't be here. You don't know what hour you're going to have that call. You don't know what hour that heart is going to make its last beat. My pastor said you better have the token. Amen. Not what the churches are dishing out. True. What he dished out. Amen. You better have the revelation of the hour. The message of the hour. Many people are fading away fast now. We were talking about the old preachers that have preached in my generation. You can name them like this in the message. One suffering from this and one suffering from that. Death is taking hold. The days on earth are numbered. We come into the final stage of the bright age. Amen. 
He said they're beginning, hallelujah, to understand the message. Brother, we're way down the road now. And his mystery, amen, is only made known to his beloved bride. She is the only one that can receive it. It is the token. God bless you and be in prayer for next week. Amen. He was interceding up until this time. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Brother Ashley. Amen. Brethren, can we stand and turn with me to 139? We'll sing that lovely hymn, Down from His Glory. Ever living story, brethren. My God and Savior came, and Jesus was His name. Amen. Down from His glory.
Thank you, Lord Jesus, down from his glory. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be thy holy name, O Father. Thank you, Lord God.